Hey everybody, it's Catrice Bailey from When Models Talk. You are now watching episode 30, part one, with special guest Sam Vernitas Thomas. Um, As you can see, I have my cool colors kit, cool color kid. I am speaking. Well, no, she said, I'm speaking. (laughs) Camilla Harris t-shirt. Hey, Nicole Carolyn, 55763. Hey, girl. But yes, um, today is going to be a great live on When Models Talk. And we're going to be talking to a wonderful special guest. And he's going to drop his knowledge and his expertise of what um, his experience has been in the industry as well as in different um, things. Yeah, I know who you are. I know who you are. (laughs) Yes, I remember. I remember. (laughs) Phone quiz knows. I remember. (laughs) But Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. I, you know I'm crazy. I'm, I'm still crazy from quiz notes. Me and my sister. Ain't nothing changed. <laughs> oh, Lord. Hey, girl. Shakira, girl. Hey, Tiffany. Look at my boo. <laughs> but, yes. Um, y'all are, y'all made me look my, mess up my whole chain of thought. Let me get, bring it back. Bring it back, Catrice. Bring it back. Uh, hmm. Okay, so, because I'm trying to get this right. I got to promote the shirt. Y'all about to be up. So, um, okay, so on When Models Talk today, we're definitely going to have a great conversation with a friend of mine that um, I had the opportunity to work with a few times in passing, but in the same, you know, arena, put it that way. And um, I reached out to him, and he said he would come on and talk to us. And I'm just waiting for him. But in the meantime, we have an inauguration <laughs> coming up tomorrow for Joe Biden and Camilla Harris. So everyone check out. See, I'm wearing my shirt. I, I'm speaking. If y'all didn't see that part, that debate that she had with the other guy, um, then yeah. Then um, this is where this shirt originated from. And plus, we got Black History Month coming up also. So this will be a great representation of um, of wearing it in support. And you can get this t-shirt from, I'm speaking, Kamala Harris, from Cool Color Kids webs- well, dot com website. Go to their website. And they also have an Instagram. So check them out and order your shirt. Okay, so my guest is on. I'm excited. And um, let me bring him on in so we can get our conversation started. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, Lord, it's hot. I'm hot. I ain't got earrings in. You know, I'm just, I'm, I was in a rush. Hey, sir. He, he, look, he, look, he like, I'm busy too. I like that thing you got on the wall. Uh, hey, bro. Hey. <laughs> That's a red light. That's a red light. <laughs> <laughs> look, I, look, I was sitting here. I was, girl, I was sitting here. I was ready, and I seen the little circle like load. I was like, "Where are my headphones? <laughs> What's yes, going on?" Everything, everything is great. It's been, it's been a lot going on. That's that. That's the thing. I'm trying I need to, to sit I need down. To see my glasses on because I keep seeing my ring stuff in the glasses. It's like. fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's it's see. Fine. I can see without them. I mean, I'm not you can that see blind, without, As long as you can see without. <laughs> you know? Yes. How are you, Catrice? I'm doing good, but I'm over here burning. You up look good. Right. Listen, you know, I was trying to do my Hold on. Let's, I was let's get into this beat first. Let's get into this. <laughs> Girl, you look amazing. <laughs> Look, I was over here rushing last minute. I was like, let me get myself together. <laughs> That's why, you know, you just toss on a good wig. Listen, wig where? So light. Where? Wig where? I... <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Let me get started. I'm playing too much. Okay. Listen. So, y'all, we have the, I, and I, I, I'm not going to mess up your name. I'm not going to mess it up. <laughs> And I said, I've been saying it right this whole entire time. But then as soon as I get on camera, it's like, why are you going to mess it up? Okay, so <laughs> we have the wonderful Dan Bernatius. 
I said it wrong. You, you were like, you were to correct the first two syllables, and then Thomas. So tell everybody, <laughs> tell everybody how to pronounce your first name. All right, I guys. thought that was your last name. You listen, I mean, a lot of people believe that San Bernitas is my last name when actually oh. it's Thomas. So, you know, the create, well, I said create, the correct um, pronunciation is San Bernitas. San so it's Bernita. like, yes, yeah, yeah, like San Bernitas. And then you got my last name, Thomas. But a lot of people, they call me Thomas because they be like, oh, uh-huh. your, your first name is Thomas. I'm like, no, my first name is San Bernitas. And they be like, well, I'm like, no. <laughs> but it's Look, been a struggle. Because <laughs> I, I heard you say it in one of your videos, and I was like, I'm going to say this name right. I'm not going to mess up this name. Listen, girl, I, I didn't realize I had that name until I was like, I think I was third grade. Because, you know, my nickname, well, my nickname that my mom gave me was Sam. My dad, yeah. my dad, yeah, my dad would never have called me that because he didn't like it. So, uh-huh. you know, throughout school, I was writing SAM on my paper. Girl, one day I went home, my mom was like, listen, you need to start writing your full name. And I'm like, what is my full name? She was like, San Bernita. So that evening until that night, I cried all night until That's I insane. felt that name. It, it's 11 letters. And I cried, and she was like, you're not leaving this room until you finish spelling that word, your name correctly. So I finally got it right, and I started mm-hmm. writing it in school, and it was it was like a whole transition. But so it's like I'm, over the years. So I'm going to say it one more time. <laughs> San Bernitas. Yes, San yes. Bernitas. Hey, listen, I'm right here. <laughs> you know, yes. I, I, I was going to get it right eventually. I mean, eventually. Mm-hmm. That's why you know. Now I can now I, got, I have to call you by your name. I can't say Thomas. I can't say Sam. I gotta just say right. Because you know, even with my brand, like I had to. You like my brand is San Bernitas, and mm-hmm. I'm the only person yes. in the world with that name. So I have. Yes, to, I've never heard of it. Right. My mom came up with it, and girl. So where? Where? Did, okay, let me say your intro first, and then so people know exactly who you are. So okay. San Bernitas. Thomas <laughs> is a creative director and wardrobe stylist. He has worked with designers such as Todd Hester and Stevie Bowie. If I say anything wrong, correct me, please. Stevie Boy. Oh, Stevie, you know what, Jesus? I should have put, I just should have put the Y. Because <laughs> Stevie Boy, I'm sorry. Stevie Boy. Okay. Yes. He has, he has publications with each designer, such as Vogue Italia, Spain, and Harper's Bazaar. Mm-hmm. And he also has the opportunity of being interviewed for his um, hometown paper, Huffington Post. Yes. yes. So everyone, please help me welcome, which I know he's done so much more, but please help me welcome Oh. Dan Bernitas Thomas. Hi, Halo. <laughs> Look, I just seen one of my friends. Like, Hi. <laughs> but I really appreciate, like, Catrice, like, when you reached out to me, I was like, are you serious? Like, I'm like, are you serious? Like, it's, it's really an honor. Thank like, you. It's really an honor. And, like, even when we spoke, you know, within the pre-screening, mm-hmm. you, you have to review your accomplishments to keep yourself yeah. grounded. Like, you yeah. have to find or leave some type of evidence or trace to keep yourself Mm -hmm. in the present moment because Mm -hmm. I forgot about all those accomplishments and I when I look back I'm like oh my god I've done this so Mm -hmm. I need to keep going to see what else I can do hi Noah hi Marla absolutely look at you (laughs) so (laughs) and during this live he is going he's going to be the one saying hi to everybody I'm saying hi in the beginning because I can't do two things at one time. So he's going to pay attention to y'all in the okay. sense of everybody come on. He gonna, he's going to say hi. Yeah. I'm going to stay close. I don't enough. I don't even know why I've come this hot sweater. <laughs> but she'll be all right, though. So we have uh, multiple topics that we're going to talk about today. Yes. And that is, we're, gonna, we're definitely going to talk about your experience. And when it pertains mm-hmm. to being a creative director, a wardrobe stylist, and modeling, 
even though you only oh, yeah. did for a certain amount of time. <laughs> yeah, about that. <laughs> I don't know why. I was, um, um, trusting <clears throat> the process, mm -hmm. vision, setting boundaries, just like what you were just talking about. Mm -hmm. And um, no, you were saying staying grounded, but boundaries are within that. Right. Um, creating a building, creating and building relationships as well as we're going to talk about the industry. Hmm. So the first thing I want to ask you is, how did you get into modeling? How did that start? Because that's what you were um, doing first. Yes. Um, I, started, I started in 2015 and didn't want to do it. My mother pressured me to get into this modeling industry. Thank and you, I know, right? I was like, <laughs> I don't want to do this. But... She just kept doing it like for years. Like even when I was a teenager, when I was in high school, she was like, "You need to do modeling." I'm like, "Nope, I'm going to college to be a vet." Mm -hmm. End up going to college to study kinesiology, which is the study of movement, because I was going to be a chiropractor mm -hmm. at the time. Mm -hmm. I still wanted to be a vet, but I was like, "No, nah, that's too much schooling. That's like ten years schooling. I could be a chiropractor yeah. within six years, and hopefully have my own practice." So she was still pushing the gun about being a model. So when I finally came back home out of college, because I dropped out, I was over it. Mm -hmm. She was like, you know, you should still do modeling. I'm like, girl, mm -hmm. I'm not doing it. Like, for what? Like, I don't, <laughs> I don't have the body. I don't have the aesthetic. I don't have it. So I gave up because mm -hmm. once I started realizing what I wanted to do with life, which was pretty much work in the fashion industry, be a creative director, I was like, hey, if I get into modeling, I can mm -hmm. master that. And, you know, get into styling, master that. And mm -hmm. then once the people book me as a creative director, I've done it all. Mm. So I listened to her. Didn't mm. know what I was doing, but I took her advice. So I took runway classes um, in Jackson, Mississippi as a model. Okay. Booked my own, my own photo shoot with um, a photographer, um, Chauncey, from Mississippi State, the college I went to. Mm. Directed, created, styled the entire thing. Um, yes. It the vision turned out great. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, the only thing is, I had hair. Um, I had like I a see lot these of hair. Pictures. Yeah, I think I believe they're still on my page. I had a lot of hair, like a lot of natural hair, and I allowed the girl to, you know, straighten it out because I wanted to give him a girl look. Uh, okay, got you, girl. I thought you were about to say you cut it off, but even though we know you cut it off now, <laughs> listen. Let me tell you why I cut it off. She cut an inch off of my hair. She was like, "Oh, you have dead ends." I'm like okay, but just trim them. Don't cut off. She cut an entire inch, so I looked like a mop. Like, all my natural flow was gone. It was just a straight even. So, after that, I cut all my hair off. Mm. So, with those pictures, I, I could brand myself, but I couldn't brand brand myself because I had a totally different look. Mm. So, I kept doing shows, you know, in Mississippi, you know, building mm. my portfolio, my resume, networking, linking up. And I had a photo shoot plan, the second one. Mm -hmm. But in the process of me doing that, my mom passed away in December. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know what? I'm not doing this right now. Mm -hmm. But I could hear her talking to me still throughout mm -hmm. that grieving process. And she was like, hey, you need to continue to do what you was meant to do. Like, I'm still watching you, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm like, yes, ma'am. So in the process of me, of me and my sisters and my dad planning her funeral, mm -hmm. I was planning a photo shoot the same wow. exact time getting the concepts together. It was hard, but I pushed mm -hmm. myself to see how far I could go throughout any emotional trauma. Yeah. Yeah. So the following year, I kept going, kept doing photo shoots, doing photo mm -hmm. shoots, doing photo shoots, and I didn't rush it. It's like I mm -hmm. took my time to really embrace my creativity and what inspired me and studying the industry and studying mm -hmm. designers, how to pronounce their proper names and their houses yes. and their lineage and it was a lot, but it was, I loved it. Mm -hmm. So before you know it, my sister moved to Philadelphia, mm -hmm. the city of brotherly love. <laughs> I say that lightly. Because <laughs> uh, you know how they get down in Philly. Yeah. And before I was actually um, stationed in Philly, mm -hmm. I made a, I did a vision board. I will never forget that this was 2016, December. And I, I put New York Fashion Week. I'm like, God, if I can just get in New York Fashion Week, I, I'm set. I won't ask for anything else. I know Girl, that's right. Before New Year's hit, I got a DM from a guy, which was on Project Runway. I forgot what season, but his first name is David Pacholi. 
And he was like, hey, I want you to be my model for New York Fashion Week. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, my God, this is it. So <laughs> I'm, I'm moving to Philly. So, you know, I fit my measurements, like my pictures and everything. So it was uh-huh. So I moved to Philly, had New York Fashion Week starting. And then when I moved to Philly, mm-hmm. my connections only got bigger. Hi, mm-hmm. Sonia. Oh. <laughs> but um, my connections only, you know, they became grander. And I started networking with designers other mm-hmm. models. I did Philly Fashion Week as a stylist. You know, I worked with Butter Obama as his creative mm-hmm. director. It was another girl that wanted me to do her fashion show, but I'm like, hey, I already have a fashion show on that day, so mm-hmm. I can't really... And then on top of that, I'm prepping for New York Fashion Week, so I had a lot on my yeah. plate. So after that, I just... I did everything within that February of 2017. Hit a depression. Mm-hmm. A slight depression. So I took a step back because I didn't realize how dark the fashion industry was. So mm-hmm. I just kept going, kept going, kept going, networking, creating with friends, you know, always staying in that creative space no matter what. Yeah. So here comes June Men's Fashion Week and a, a designer that I discovered like within that year, Stevie Boy. I was a fan of Stevie Boy. I was like one of his biggest fans. And I actually <laughs> won one of his contests of like, I got a mug, a t-shirt, a pen. And I was like, God, please let me model for him. Please let me model. He's designed for Beyonce, Little Kim, mm-hmm. Nicki Minaj, Lady Gaga, Jay-Z. The list goes on. And I messed up his name. Jesus, take the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> so next thing you know, I applied to a casting call and I got booked. Okay. As a model. Now keep in mind, I'm not signed. I'm not signed to anybody. Like it's yeah. all me mm-hmm. looking mm-hmm. for my gigs, going out there, and I'm dieting. For me to be small, I'm still dieting. Like I would go, mm-hmm. I would do a pescatarian diet, do a clean system, detox, just to have mm-hmm. that extra cleanse. Yeah. Now I don't have her no mail because you know I've been eating good lately, you know. <laughs> I'm, I got a little chunky up here, but you know, body's still off. She's still cute. She's still cute. <laughs> But throughout that process, I was dieting, you know, just to get yeah. that extra stench in. Mm-hmm. So I switched up my look. I was like, okay, I have a big show in New York. Like, this is major. Dyed my hair blonde. Had a little impromptu photo shoot to have content before. Yeah. Like, girl, everything was lining up. Got to New York. Met Stevie Boy. Met his PR at Naomi. Mm-hmm. The whole entire, like, the, the whole entire how do I say this? The grand scheme was just mm-hmm. so inviting. I felt mm-hmm. like I was home. Oh. Being in New York, like working with people. I mean, even it was another Philly friend that was there. So they even made it even better. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh my God, you made it? And he was like, yeah, because you sent me the casting call. I was like, oh, okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a great experience. I met, um, I met a, another friend, a stylist, um, Mikhail Benjamin. He, he styles for Kiki Palmer and yeah um bella thorne so you know we're still cool and it was a great experience got published mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. he has another show for fall fashion week in new york got booked again and i mm-hmm. actually and we walked in girl it's like everything <laughs> was just falling into place and i was so full and grateful and that's when the mm-hmm. publications came in and everything was a little fast and i was able yeah. to keep up mm-hmm but at the same time, I was drained. Mm. And I hit another, it's like I hit rock bottom. Like, I would mm. say the end of 2017, it was about November, December. It's like things came into realization, like something just shifted. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I think it's time for me to shift the gears, but I was, but I still wanted to model. I'm like, I'm still attached to this whole model thing, but mm-hmm. that's not my fulfilling, like, that's not my grand scheme purpose. Yeah. So I took some time off to figure things off. So I got deeper into my spirituality and mm-hmm. figuring things out and healing those traumas and hear, like just going into those deep, dark depths of myself yeah. and really figuring out what is going on, what can I do, how can I grow and heal from this aspect, mm-hmm. and which that led me into back into wardrobe style and focusing mm-hmm. on that. Started doing that, you know, back in 2000 and I think it was like 1920. You know, I would do little gigs here and there, but everybody, oh, I, girl, I used to hate going to Philly events. Let me tell you why. <laughs> everybody used to be like, um, where you been? Like, where you at? What are you doing? I'm like, um, I'm not, that's like, we need you to model. I'm like, no, I don't do that anymore. I'm, I'm doing this. And they was like, 
We know that, but we want you to model. I'm like, mm -hmm. girl, like, everybody was at my neck. And I felt so bad because a lot of people, I wasn't really sharing what I was going through. And a lot mm -hmm. of people did not know that I was going through this whole emotional, mental thing. And I yeah. just had to really detach from the entire world. So I stopped everything. Mm -hmm. Back in 2018, I just, I found myself. That was the year of discovery. And mm -hmm. I was in between jobs. I couldn't keep a job. And it was, my job was letting me go because the company was closing. Like, it was mm -hmm. so much. And I'm, like, living like living on my own in, in Philly. And, I'm, I mean, I got roommates, but it's, like, I'm still having to pay rent. And I'm, like, how am I going to pay rent? Yeah. So I just kept fighting and fighting and fighting. And finally, these jobs just opened up. And I just mm -hmm. took them. And I was working two part-time jobs and they both work with my schedule and I got my a better I place. I elevated. Everything was falling into place. Like everything was falling. That was like 2018. Yeah. That's when mm -hmm. everything started to really come into full circle. And after 18, you know, 19, but after, I think the modeling stopped after 2017, after that year, mm -hmm. I was done. I've accomplished everything I wanted in that aspect. I got my publications. I got the mm -hmm. newspaper. I got everything, my portfolio. I was done. I clocked out. And I, I don't regret it, but I know that mm -hmm. a lot of people, they were like, where are you at? Like, what happened? Like, you were really on the right track. And I'm like, Look, mm -hmm. you got to listen. Like, certain things that you see, mm -hmm. it could be for a certain period of time. But if it's longevity, it's longevity. If it's not, it's still okay. Yeah. So once I surrendered everything, everything else, came and fell into place which means I made room for my entire expansion yeah which is awesome because especially tapping especially take, even though you know because I was like wait a minute where are you going <laughs> like okay yes. well, this stop here where's the rest you just disappeared <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know. I just, I went, girl, I was going. I, I, was, I was out of trace. I remember it was one show, the very last show I had, and it was in Philly. It was 2018. It was like January, February, within that time period. And I was like, oh, I'm getting back in the industry. You know, I'm working as, I was, for that show, I was a creative director and model. So I was doing both parts. And stylist as well. It was for a which lot. one? For which show? This was um this was a project with um Devin Millard. Mm -hmm. So she brought me onto this project with um Adidas. I think yeah, it was Adidas and um some store. It was some major shoe company. I forgot it was so long ago. Not right now. But um, <laughs> I was sick. Like I had, I think I had, I think I had like a, I, I, I almost had strep. But it, mm. it was like, it wasn't the flu. It was like a bad, I had a sinus infection throughout mm. that entire process. So I'm still going to rehearsal. Sick as, sick as whatever. Mm -hmm. And for the show, I couldn't make it because I went to the doctor the same day. And my doctor, she said, if you don't sit down, you're not mm. gonna really going to make it. You're going to be in the hospital. So whatever you mm. got going on, you need to cancel. Mm. So I canceled going to work. I canceled the show. Like I was out. I was bummed out. Like I was really trying. That's how. That's how invested I was. I was still trying to model and work on set and be at the show mm -hmm. while I'm sitting here sick as a dog. Mm. So once it got to that point, God was like, "I need you to sit down. Like yeah. I really need you to sit your butt down. If not, you're gonna be worse than what you are." Yeah. So at that God, point, and Bible say God knows how to sit you down. Listen, and I actually listen because it would, I, it <laughs> hurt me to cancel that show. But it's like once I cancel that show, something said that's it. You really need to have a whole break in every aspect of your life. Like mm -hmm. you just need to. And that's when I sat down. Like 2018, the early. That's why I was like, y'all, that's the last show. This mm -hmm. is the last show, and it was. That was the very. That was like one of the very last shows in Philly that I actually modeled in, and I worked anything. Wow. But you know what? In this industry, it can take you. It if you because. It can take you to that point where you're just like burnt out in a sense. Like right. I've been doing so much. Mm -hmm. Because it can be fast. It can be very, very fast. Especially if people if people see you as an asset, as like, ooh, I really like this person's look. Mm -hmm. And you didn't even think that because you was like, okay, my body type, I can't model. But that wasn't even true because you could. Right. 
Girl, I'm telling you, I'm so I be forgetting. I some I don't like put myself on a pedestal. I don't like bragging about myself. Like sometimes I just be like, I'm I'm mediocre. But there is a flip side to where I have to empower myself because because I can't yeah. expect it from other people. Yeah, and so it's I think definitely it, a learning experience. And I think some people think be you know you saying to yourself how great you are and mm-hmm. the things you have done. There's nothing wrong with that. It, now if you it's out nice. here talking about um, um, now you doing the most now. <laughs> and listen and you like putting other people down while you raising yourself up that's a different right case. exactly but if you're not doing that you're just promoting yourself and saying yes I am great yes I am a winner yes I am confident yes whatever yes mm-hmm. is you know yes I am the bomb you know listen <laughs> I, I had to, that. it's not and it, it's like even in the model industry like I because it got to a point, I was training models in Philly. I was doing shows. I was training right. them, teaching them how to walk from boys to girls, women to men. I was teaching them, you know, how to just keep that strut together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And a lot of them are insecure. And a lot of them, and what a lot of people don't realize is when they come to set, they're here with a lot of strangers. And you do have people in the industry who are very big headed. They're very cocky, yeah. thinking they're that girl or that guy and Mm -hmm. you know I used to come in and I mean I did get big headed I'm not gonna lie because (laughs) I put in the work I said I've been doing this for years so Uh you know I've been I've been in the depths and I used to come in there and be like listen I'm gonna humble Mm y'all I don't care what you done I don't care whatever it is I'm proud of you but you are here for me I'm here to teach Mm -hmm. you I'm hired to move you forward and help you out all that cockiness and stuff, it's not going to work. It's yeah. not going to get you anywhere. And it'd be, and I, I used to cry on set with like models because they'd be like, they'd be crying. I'm like, girl, come here. Let's go have a talk. And we have a whole <laughs> little self esteem talk. Like, what's really going on? And they would yeah. tell me all their insecurities. I'm like, listen, once you get on the runway, it's just you and that runway. You yeah. don't see nobody but nope. each. Just that walk. I said, if you got to count in your head, if you got to play a song, if you got a picture, <laughs> Beyonce over here to the right, Rihanna over here to the left, if you got a picture of them watching mm-hmm. you out of everybody else, do what you got to do. Absolutely. And that's what I miss. Like, I miss mentoring them and being there for them. And I just, once I let that go, I was fully able to move forward into other aspects. But I miss my babies, though. I ain't gonna lie. I do miss my little babies, though. I do. But that just says, you know what, even though being a creative director, you can still work with different models. You can still mentor different people. You can actually Mm -hmm. turn that process of being a creative director, but also being someone, I wouldn't say a life coach, or I don't really know the term, analogy, (laughs) to to say exactly what it would be as far as someone that mentors Mm -hmm. and helps other models. So I actually I used to it. think about that. Yeah, because you everything goes together. Just like when it comes to modeling, acting, everything in entertainment, mm-hmm. you can do it, it all. It's in hand. I can be like, okay, I want to go in as a model, but I really want to be a fashion designer, and boom, and learn the ins and outs, and get connections, and 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 learn from different people in the industry. Right. So it's it's it's. Are definitely opportunities out there. You just have to be mindful of the opportunities that you're going for and the people that mm-hmm. you're connected with. Because just like you said, the um, industry can be very dark. I know how dark, I, well, I don't know how dark it really could be, but because I, I never really had those experiences. Right. <laughs> I know how dark it could be because I've had, had experiences where mm-hmm. there weren't good experiences. So I feel like, and just like I told somebody one time, I was like, um, if what did I say? I said, as far as the Me Too movement, I was like, if, if um in the model industry, I think everybody will stand up on some Me Too movement. <laughs> Listen. It's too it's too much. And it can really play a toll on you, your Girl. body, your body, your spirit, everything. So you do have mm-hmm. to sometimes check yourself out. Right. And, and like center yourself and position yourself and build yourself back up because you can really, really get torn down. And just like some of those people where, you know, they have a whole lot of insecurities. I feel like every single model that comes in, there's some type of insecurity that at least one of them got. Right. They ain't going to tell it, but they got it. (laughs) 
they'll be acting like, no, I'm fine. Like, I'm the hot stuff. Really go back and Right. I'm, look, I'm, look, I'm the one that always get picked first. I'm like, girl. I um I seen you in the bathroom crying, sis. So don't play it. I ain't gonna tell nobody. I ain't gonna tell you this is you you can find in me, but you need to humble yourself because we yes. all here to eat and there is enough yes. group for us to yep. snack on and they don't understand yes. that. And I keep girl, I used to girl, I'm telling you, these shows used to irk me. They just be sitting there like they just hot tamale and I'm like, girl. I be in my phone the whole time. I'm like, y'all, let me just play a game or something because I ain't got time for this. I'm just here to work. That's it. But you know, but you know what? It was a um. So when I first started, I my first well not my first runway show because one of my mm-hmm. my first ro- runway show was with Nicole Miller, her brand. okay, and my agency got me that particular one. First of all, I didn't know what I was doing. That was my first time walking the wrong way. I did the pivot wrong, completely wrong, went on the wrong foot. Girl, who have it? But I, f- I faked the time make because what else could I do? And that's how, yeah, that's how you do it. You got to fake it till you make it. Listen, ain't nobody know. Girl, I'm telling you, I don't care how many videos, I don't care how many runway shows. You can watch Chanel, Runway, Spring, Summer, 97 mm-hmm. with Naomi. And try to mimic her wall. You gonna you're not gonna get it just like that on the wrong way. The only way you, gotta, you learn how to do it, you gotta consistently do yeah. it while there's a crowd. You can practice, yeah. practice, 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 practice with nobody in the room. But once you get out there, your energy shifts. Yeah, it's something it just you got butterflies. You get nervous. You like, girl, I forgot which way to pivot. I forgot which <laughs> which foot should I step out on. It's we all go through that. I went through yep. it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just, but the the thing is, if you mess up, you mess up. It's okay. Yeah. Make sure you laugh in that moment. Make sure you keep yourself yeah. lifted. Because if you mm-hmm. don't, you're going to beat yourself up for one little mistake. Like, we're all yeah. human. We're all meant to have these mishaps, these mistakes. These We can't help it. Yeah. And I know it's very important to, in a sense, be honest and be your authentic self. Because you may think mm-hmm. that the next, that, the person next to you is not going going through something, but they could be going through the same thing you're going through, and y'all right. just not having a conversation. Exactly. And, and y'all y'all not <laughs> helping each other because y'all don't well, y'all don't want to open up like okay hey. I'm scared right now. You know, just be honest because that person girl. can actually help you boost yourself up. Exactly, girl. I used to always be like, I remember I, it used to be so funny because it'd be the person behind me or in front of me. They be like. <sighs> I'd be like, girl, you nervous? She'd be like, and he's, I'm like, girl, me too. Then we'd sit there and we'd laugh about it and have this whole <laughs> conversation and this energetic exchange. And before you know it, she just out there and killed it. I went out there and killed it. Like that single mm-hmm. conversation itself can really push you out there and make you comfortable in that space. Absolutely. Let me let me lower this down real quick. Hold on. <laughs> One second. I don't wanna... Girl, I thought I seen something move, girl. I was like, wait, what I was can't. that? I was like, what was that? Okay, so my head going to be cut off just a little bit because I want to show my shirt. So, mm-hmm. side note, I have one I'm Speaking by C- Camilla Harris mm-hmm. from Cool Color Kid. We all know that her, the inaugural, I'm saying it so wrong, inauguration <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> is tomorrow. <laughs> so, everyone, please check out, look at my sister, she on here too. Please mm-hmm. check out Go to Cool Color Kids website, and they also have an Instagram, and pick up a shirt. Um, Black History Month is coming right on up. Yes. So check them out, and that's just my little, you know, quick little spiel. And if anybody ever want to, any, anybody want to get one, I am, I'm speaking. I'm speaking. If anybody saw that when she did the um, whole thing, did you did you catch it? Yes. Where, where the uh, debate where she was talking to this, the, you know, the vice president. Oh, and yeah, 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 yeah. He kept on inter- interrupting her, and mm-hmm. she said, I'm speaking. Yes, I'm speaking. Yes, mm-hmm. So, yes, check out Cool Color Kids shirt. And check out everything they have. Everything they have is really great quality, and um, everything's amazing. So, getting back to um, our conversation, I just wanted to point that out real quick. Yes. Um, Let me get my own thing right Shout out to Ran Out of Water. Yeah, <laughs> I need to get someone. I'm hot. Look, look. But, okay, um, we we got another break coming over. Huh? Yeah, we got another commercial <laughs> break. So we. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So getting into um, 
Now, because I had a whole list of questions to ask, but I have to go over them because some of the stuff you already answered, mm -hmm. which is a good oh. thing. Oh, girl, you so, don't like to talk a lot. <laughs> look, ain't nothing wrong with that because then I ain't got to ask you too much, too many questions because you already on it. Yes. And um, it's the Instagram for Cool Color Kid is at Cool mm -hmm. K Kid Jen. Okay. I don't know how to pin it. I don't know how to pin y'all. So. Girl, I was trying to pin it. I don't even think I can. <laughs> I don't know. But I'll figure out. I'll just keep on repeating it off and on. But, um, okay, so let's talk about, because you mentioned so many things. You said you created a vision board. Yes. Now, in creating the vision board, oh, he says, because Cool Color Kids, Cool Color Kid Generation is on here, and they're saying mm -hmm. that shirt is, shirt is out um, on the 25th. 2021. So on the 20th, 25th, people can start ordering. If you want a shirt. So you got a, so you already got a shirt. Okay, VIP. Yes, I, I see do. You. I see you, VIP. Come on, marketing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you know, yeah, because I, um, I always talk about um, his, his line, his, uh, his brand, because it's, mm -hmm. it's great quality, and it's cool color kit, and it's not just for all black kids. It's for every, the generation of children. So, yes. <laughs> and my sister over here it. too, that's why she's laughing. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it's for everybody. It's not just for one particular right. brand. I mean, one particular person. So, um, and their quality is great. Because if I, if it's something ain't great, I ain't mentioning it. I ain't going to wear it. As long as that t-shirt quality good, I'm good. I love a good quality t-shirt. Listen, exactly. I do. I love it. So I'm going to definitely check them out because I got to get me a shirt, girl. I got to. I'm jealous. Yeah, I'm like, she, been, look, she over here got a shirt. I ain't got one. <laughs> Black History Month is coming. And, um, and I feel like that needs to be all year round, to be honest. Girl, but, what, what, what did we say? She was like, we need a longer month. <laughs> 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 her and Bobby, she like, um, we need a month. Lunch. <laughs> yeah, I love that video. Yes, we need a longer month than just how many days? 30, 28 days. And we just celebrated MLK Day. Girl, it's um, 365 day celebration here. <laughs> well, that's what we're going to say. 365 days of celebration. That's what it yes, is. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> wear wear, wear a, a shirt every day. That pertains to Black history. Oh, Never, we... I'm a, I'm, me being Black, I'm showing history every day. <laughs> I got a couple of them too. I got Black home. I got a I got a lady that's um, punching the police out. Listen, I'm ready. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. I'm gonna send I'm gonna send you that link for that. But I'm yeah, I'm ready. I know you gotta send me that one. Oh, no, it's punch, she punching the police out. You know what? Just take the wheel. Okay, so. You said that you did a vision board. Yes. And when you did the vision board, your vision actually came to life. Mm -hmm. So how was that experience and what made you even do a vision board? Or is this something that you normally do or is it just like every year? <laughs> or is it yeah, it's, it's you know? very every year. I do a vision board every year. Like ever since I've heard about them, like I started, I think I did my first vision board back in 2000. 13. Mm. And I've done one every year. Did you do one this year? Oh, of course. You know I did. <laughs> I, I have so many. One. Yes, I I did one like hours before New Year's. Mm. It was, I mm. took my time and I actually, you know, I meditated about what I wanted to bring and I mm. did it in three separate columns. I did the I did a work column, I did a personal and I did a miscellaneous and I actually got the idea from Issa Rae because that's how she okay. did hers. And seeing hers and how insecure and all these opportunities came to fruition, I was like, yo, let me do my vision board in columns this year instead of having it all over the place. So that's what well, I did this year. Send me whatever you did, like that process. Yeah, like I'm going to you. It's on, it's on Instagram. Yeah, because yeah, I haven't done my vision board yet. Girl, I you, normally you do got plenty of time. Year. I do one every year, mm -hmm. and it's crazy because I look back on them and they actually come true. And I was like, "Yes!" Right? Be careful what you ask for because you just might get it. 
Exactly. Right. Yes. What, what, say it again. <laughs> Listen, be careful what you ask for because you just might get it. Mm-hmm. And that's and and it's just like just setting intentions and putting it out to God, putting it out to the universe and actually working towards that and hitting that vibrational frequency, girl. Everything yeah. always come, everything always come to me and from the New York Fashion Week to the year after that, like even um last year when I made one, I put New York Fashion Week again. Uh-huh. But I wasn't trying to do New York Fashion Week as a model. I was trying to do it as a wardrobe stylist. And that's uh-huh. what I did. I wore, uh-huh. I did what I was um Todd Hazard's wardrobe stylist for his um yes. New York Fashion Week last year. And that was amazing. That was uh-huh. Whew, it, I was tired because I was in New York back to back. Like I was in New York one day, and then I had to go back to New York like two days later. So it was while I was working full time. Still, you know, I still work full time. So yeah, I'm still working a little not nine to five, but she had eight hour shift. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I I was still managing everything, and it worked. It honestly worked. Like even with this year, I think what did I put on there? I put like. Just connections, mm-hmm. saving more money, traveling. I put LA on there because I, I'm going. Well, I'm going to LA this year um, in okay. a few months, so that's in the store. I can't wait for that. And what's your Instagram handle? Because I'm about, I'm about to put it in Rome. <laughs> yes. Um, you want me to spell it for you? Uh, yeah. Wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. I mean, I think I'm doing this so wrong. So wrong. <laughs> Listen, um, I can definitely. I, I told y'all I can't do two things at one time, y'all. Spell, spell it for me. Uh, S A N is a Nancy. V is a mm-hmm. Victor. E R N E T A S. San Vernita. That's S A N V E R N E. Mhm. T S. T A S. T A S. See, look, yes. look. Okay, he said it because. <laughs> it's starting to mess up. And I'm really? Oh. Like, yeah. I, I told you I'm having to do two things at one time. I gotta, you know, I gotta do one thing at a time. You want me to do it? Oh, my sister said the painting in the back. I know. I was looking at it. Like, yes. Hey, boo. <laughs> <laughs> so, you said that you do. So, don't forget to send me the um, least. You know her name. I'm going to say it so wrong right now because it's going blank. Um, as far as the vision board process. <laughs> yeah, Issa. Yeah, I'm going I'm to definitely see you. Issa, Issa. right. Issa, right. Yeah, her, yeah, because her concept was just just being, I mean, of course the intention is still there, but having it in different sections, you know, your work, yeah. your personal, and your miscellaneous. And it's crazy because already I'm doing things that are already on my vision board. Like, for mm-hmm. example, fashion conversations within my miscellaneous. Here we are having a conversation. Um, swimming, taking yeah. swimming lessons, whereas in my miscellaneous, I signed up for swimming lessons like a couple of weeks ago. So awesome. I'm like, yeah, like going to LA. Um, I, I actually, I'm going to LA. It's already, well, I think the tickets like it's almost, it's already booked for LA like for sometime in a few months. So a lot of things are really coming to fruition a little fast, and I'm just like, okay, can I keep up? Which I'm sure I can, but. Be careful what you wish for because you just might get it. Um, so you you got a comment um section on the bottom of your screen? Yes. Can you put your handle in? Because she says she spelled it wrong. So Oh, no problem. So and I, I already know I'm gonna mess it up again. So Listen, my phone is so used to put my name in. <laughs> like Siri be like, Sam you says I'm like, yeah. Girl. Okay, there we go. See, he did it. Yes, yes, yeah. Okay. She said, honey, she said, you ain't never seen drip until you seen sand. Oh, uh-huh. thank you, boo. <laughs> I've been trying, y'all. I mean, I, I love fashion. Like, fashion to me is just expressing myself as an aesthetic. Like, that's it. Like, you know, I just switch it up. Like, some days I just want to be just very, mm-hmm. just very. What's the word I'm looking for? Some days I want to be couture. Mm-hmm. Some days I want to be streetwear. Some days I want to be businessman. Some days I just want to be bummy. I don't care. It just depends <laughs> on how I feel. And I just, yeah. and I'll, I'll go thrifting. I will recycle something. I'll throw in an outfit that people think they've never seen before. And I'm like, girl, I wore that the <laughs> other day. 
<laughs> I already washed my clothes, but I'll take it to the cleaner. Oh, what? So what? <laughs> so, what made you actually get into fashion, though? Well, how did that become your passion? <sighs> Girl. Thank you for watching When Models Talk, episode 30, with special guest San Vernitas Thomas.